So today we're going to be making a plum and zucchini bread with a twist and it is going to be super good. I hope that you'll join me. So I have a plum tree that grows these beautiful European plums. They're just absolutely delicious and I've got a whole tree full of them and I've been doing all kinds of things with them to preserve them and cook them into things and cobblers and all kinds of things for the family. Well, I just had a new grandbaby uh, just this last week. So tonight I'm gonna be going over to my son and my daughter-in-laws and they're gonna be bringing their own dinner from a DoorDash gift card that they did. So I wanna bring them a special little dessert. I think they're really gonna like it. So we're gonna start off by combining uh, two eggs into our mixer. And to that, I'm gonna be adding three quarters of a cup of sugar. And I'm gonna let that start mixing together. Now this is gonna be a healthier version. So instead of the oil for me, I'm gonna be adding one of these containers of the triple zero Oikos yogurt. It has 15 grams of protein and it, they're very good, they're very tasty. And I'm gonna add that in place of my oil. Next, I'm gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of salt. I use pink Himalayan sea salt when I bake. I'm also gonna be using one teaspoon of baking powder. Now to this, I'm actually going to add a half pint of my Nigella plum jam. Now I made this about a month ago. This was from some frozen European plums that I had from last summer. So I'm going to add my plum jam. Now if you have a plum syrup you want to add, go ahead and add that to it. I'm just going to add this jam directly into my bread. I bought these on Amazon, if you can see them. They're, they're like a black sesame, but they completely change their texture after you turn them into jam. So in addition to that, I am gonna be adding some fresh plums off my tree. So I'm cutting up a half of a pint of fresh plums, and you can see they're very small. I wanna make sure that my grandkids are gonna eat these after I make them and they aren't terrified because there's little pieces of plum in it. What's interesting is they'll go eat these plums off the tree, but if I try to make them into something and it's not disguised well enough, they just, they won't eat them. They won't even try them. So I have to really work to use a little bit of ingenuity to get them to, you know, try different foods sometimes, especially the one. He's, I think, allergic to fruit, I don't know, and vegetables. Probably going to take four or five plums and I may even throw these in the hand blender. You won't find anything like this in the grocery store. These are picked ripe. They're so sweet and I'll tell you what, as they ripen even more, they just get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. They're just so good. So I'm going to do one more plum. Let me get my blender out and We'll go ahead and get these plums all blended together. Are you enjoying this video today? If so, will you give me a like or a thumbs up or share this video with someone you think might be enjoying it as well? I'm going to try to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And at the end of the year, if I hit my 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a brand new Presto canner to uh, one lucky subscriber. So if you're interested in, you know, being part of that drawing, please subscribe today. Send me an email to homesteadpatch63 at gmail.com. And I will go ahead and put you in the drawing. And if I can hit 10,000 subscribers, we all win. There we go. And it's gonna give it some really beautiful color as well. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now I suppose you could make this with green plums or whatever you have that you may like. These are the plums that I have growing on my tree, so that's what I use. 
Okay, so to that, we're gonna add a little bit of flour. I'm gonna put in one and a half to two cups. There's one and a half. And we'll see if we need any more than that. But that is really, really, really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add another half a cup of flour. So I want more of a batter that's more on the thick side. That looks pretty good. Wow, that's gonna be a beautiful cake. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is add about two cups of zucchini to my mix. Now, I took this zucchini out of the freezer, and as you can see, it is so watery. And I actually drained all this before I put it in the freezer, which is not a problem, because I'm gonna show you my little trick that I do to get all of the moisture out of my zucchini. So what I'm gonna do is take a cup right here, and I use just a little lemon squeezer. I am just going to put this zucchini right through the lemon squeezer or juicer, whatever you call this thing. All right, so I'm going to just put that in just like this. Let me show you how it looks. And I'm just going to squeeze away. I want to get all that liquid out of the zucchini. I don't want this overly watered. Look at all that juice coming out of there. You know, zucchini is one of those vegetables. It has so much water in it. It's just unbelievable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little measuring cup here and I'm just gonna scoop this, this, this zucchini right into the measuring cup. It's probably gonna take a couple of these to equal a cup, but it is super fast. This is a, this is a really fast way of, of getting your all the liquid out of your zucchini. Now this leftover liquid from the zucchini, I mean, it would be great if you want to put it into a smoothie or some soup or something like that. I mean, it's all been unflavored, so, you know, really easy to work with. And I forgot I have one more little secret ingredient. I put in a half a box of instant pudding. Now, you can put in any flavor you want if you want to put in vanilla or, I'm gonna put in chocolate because this is for my grandkids and I know they're gonna like it. It's gonna taste like a big chocolate cake. It's gonna be very good. And this is sugar-free pudding that I use. But honestly, if you wanted to use a, you know, a sugar pudding, I mean, whatever works, you know, this is, this is pretty easy stuff. So we're just gonna put that back in, stir it together, and we want a nice thick batter. I don't want it real mushy or really, you know, watery. That's why I drained all of the liquid off of the zucchini. I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, you wanna scrape down your sides one last time. Get all of that uh, mixture off the sides. Make sure all that flour is integrated into your, into your cakes. Before I get these put into the pans, I'm gonna go preheat my oven and then I'll show you how I do this. So I decided it'd be kind of fun since it's for the grandkids to kind of make these in little individual baking dishes. So I'm just gonna spray them with some coconut spray. So all we're gonna do now is fill these about half of the way full. I'm just gonna put some of this wonderful cake mix in, maybe three quarters of the way full. Now you could make this into a cake, a bun cake, a cupcakes, whatever it is that you like. I just really wanted to do these little baking dishes. I just thought they were really cute to take over there tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my preheated oven at 375. Now I'm gonna check it in about 20 to 25 minutes because they're so small, they're gonna cook a lot faster than a regular size cake would. 
Well, these little cakes came out so cute and so adorable. I just can't wait to show them to you. Now I've decided since these are going to my, my little grandkids tonight, well, a couple of them are, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make like a little frosting to put over the top. Now it's not gonna be like a real thick frosting. It's gonna be more like just a little drizzle frosting that I can put on these. So all I'm gonna do now is just take them out of these little containers. Now the, the containers with these, uh, I guess they're called silicone. They come out really easy. These are a little bit harder to get out, but uh, but not bad. Let me show you. There you go. There's one. I'm just gonna turn them around. Oh, they smell so good. <laughs> they're so adorable. So while we're waiting for our little cakes to cool, I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of half and half to some of this powdered sugar. And I'm gonna add some blue food coloring. And I'm gonna mix it. I thought I had some red, but we're just gonna do blue. They'll love blue, the little grandkids. It's not really much sugar, but it's enough that it's gonna it's gonna make it pretty and they're gonna enjoy it. And I may, I have some frosted animal crackers I may put on them too, so. We'll see how that goes. I don't know, I also have some chocolate chips I may put on the top. You just put this all away and I will wash my containers and then I can frost these as soon as these little cakes cool down. So our cakes have cooled enough to frost, so it's time to frost the cakes. So I've got my frosting all ready here. I've got it kind of set up a little bit. It's been sitting out. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put some of this beautiful blue frosting right on the top of the cakes. But that's basically it in a nutshell. That's how they're gonna look very bright. <laughs> So we're gonna sample one before I get all these silly things frosted. So let's give these a try. They're just kind of a, a fun thing to do today. These are not really on my diet. They're not super unhealthy because I made them with yogurt and I didn't use any oil or fat, but I, I do wanna give them a try and just let you know how they came out. So they're a, Beautiful little cake. I just cut a little piece. Mmm. Mmm. Super good. Mmm. Mmm. Heavy duty. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for watching me make these funny little cakes, muffins, whatever you want to call them. Fresh off the tree, very delicious, pretty healthy, and uh, just a lot of fun to make. My grandkids are going to love them tonight. So if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a like, a thumbs up, or ring the bell for future notifications. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.